And secondly, what is a year? So a year earlier year or a calendar year of what? I, it seems to me that both of the people misunderstood the question and voted, yes it does. What percentage of people were accurate and said, no, that's the wrong statement? Well, that could be. I, I, I failed a driver's test once because I interpreted the questions too, too, uh, <laughs> too deeply. I, I don't, I, I'm not sure that's the case in this. Hi, my name is uh, Shane Sears, and uh, uh, I read an article on the internet uh, that I thought was uh, interesting, and I hope that you guys could respond to it. Uh, uh, one of the things that uh, posited was that the theory of evolution, like there's an intellectual job that you have to make to, to get it, and then there's consequences which are really threatening people's beliefs. And so it's the suggestion that the uh, gentleman had was that maybe you could try to teach them something that is similarly unintuitive, but doesn't have the same threatening uh, aspects to their beliefs. And the thing that he cited, not as an instance of evolution, but just something that was similarly unintuitive, was Wikipedia. Like Wikipedia, I mean, it's a very strange idea. You, you have anyone edit something, and you think that the garbage will come out. And instead, you actually get something that is really useful. So I was just wondering if there's any, uh, if, if you think that's a good idea, or if there's any other similar things that you can use that get people to hone their these unintuitive ideas to get them to step into the idea of evolution, kind of in a more step by step that isn't as threatening. Thank you. I'd like to pay tribute to Wikipedia. I, I, when, when I was first told about it, I, my immediate reaction was, well, obviously that won't work. Um, I mean, it's just a ridiculous idea that, that people could actually go in and, and edit. And then I went in and had a look, and I looked up something that I, that I know something about, uh, and I was astounded at how good it was. Yeah. Um, and I tried the experiment of altering something, um, uh, it actually need, needed to be altered. I, 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 lo I looked up natural selection, because I know a little bit about that, and it, and it, it was a, an, an almost perfect article. It was really, really, really good. But there was one thing that stood out like a sore thumb, which was a recommendation of a book, which had nothing whatever to do with natural selection, but m maybe there was one sentence in it that had something to do with natural selection, but it clearly a book that didn't belong in an encyclopedia article on, on natural selection. Um, so I removed the reference. Uh, and next day it was back. <laughs> so I, res I removed it again. And I think uh, within minutes it was back. <laughs> um, but th these examples are relatively rare. And uh, so I, I, I do think it's, a, it's an astonishingly counterintuitive uh, feat of uh, well, of, of human achievement. But the question I asked, the interesting question, um, could you, I, I take it you mean soften up people to evolution by pointing to something which is less threatening, uh, which might be equally hard to understand. I don't quite see what, why Wikipedia would do that, but as you were talking, I did think that perhaps one way to do a bit of seduction, in, 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 not quite in, in Lawrence's way, but, in a, but in, in, in a different way. Rather than trying to seduce people by saying evolution is fully compatible with your religion, which I don't think it is, to say evolution is not a handbook of immorality and violence. It doesn't lead to Hitlerism. Um, it doesn't degrade humanity to be, uh, to be related to other apes. I say other apes because of course we are apes and not just descended from apes. So maybe that's another, that's a kind of seduction technique I could buy into. I, I wouldn't have to compromise my principles by saying evolution is compatible with your supernaturalist hogwash. <laughs> <laughs> but what I could say is, is, is evolution is fully compatible with your with your morality, with, your, with the fact that you, that you don't steal, you don't kill, uh, you, you mean, and, and, and you're not a racist. All, all these things could be, could be done with a sufficiently sophisticated interpretation of evolution, I have to add, not a naive interpretation. Yeah. Thank you very much for the talk today. I have, I guess, a question for each of you. If the majority of Americans don't believe in evolution, and it's true that they don't, and the majority of Americans go to school, you can see where the standing line 
but it can't just be that people start going to church and then it's too late for the school to educate them because so many people convert to religion as adults. It's my understanding that all Southern Baptists are required at a certain age to say, oh, I'm not believing all this mm-hmm. nonsense. Um, so that can't be the issue. And my question to you, I guess more question about the physical because you're going back to England. Um, I know you're not going to describe this either one of you, but I'm becoming increasingly frightened in this country that in order to run for a political office, one has to declare his or her religious bona fide. No, I agree with that entirely. I honestly don't know what to do. I mean, if either of you have a suggestion, I would love to hear it. Um. Well, as, as you say, I'm not an American, and uh, I have to be a, a, a bit careful treading in this, in this field, not that I often am. Um, but it, it is certainly very noticeable that American politicians cannot make a speech without mentioning God. British politicians cannot ever mention God when making a speech. Uh, there are religious British politicians, Tony Blair, uh, is a very religious man, just, just been indeed received, would you believe, into the Roman Catholic Church. Um, and, but, but, he, but whenever challenged to, to wear his religion on his sleeve, he would, he would um, retreat hastily. Uh, and he, was, he was challenged by Jeremy Paxman, who, who's Britain's most aggressive television interviewer. He said, in a kind of sneering way, is it really true, Mr. Blair, that you actually pray with George Bush <laughs> and, and Blair said, no, 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 no. <laughs> so, it, 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 it is, it, there is something different about the way politicians are trained by their minders and their spin doctors to, uh, to address their public, because everybody believes that the United States is a nation of religious maniacs. I'm not sure that I do believe that. I, I, I think that this country has been maligned. Uh, I don't think it's as bad as all that, anything like. And I think it's up to people who don't take a religious view to stand up and be counted and perhaps form a lobby. Uh, because the other side is very, very good at lobbying. And what politicians really respond to is not so much uh, a perception of what the total number of people who believe in such and such a thing is. They get systematically lobbied by special interest groups. And uh, so there's the Irish lobby, and there's the Jewish lobby, and there's the steel lobby, and there's the, there's the coal lobby, and, the, and the, the oil lobby, and things. And these are powerful, well-financed interest groups. And so maybe what the godless among the American population need to do is to recognize that they really are a very substantial proportion of the population and behave as if they were. Uh, And um, as as you know, organizing atheists has been likened to herding cats, which is is a a compliment in a way, but it it doesn't help to get results in, in the political sphere. Well, you know, the pro- part of the problem with that, though, and, and I've been involved in political camp- 